welcome to this edition of Conversations with Lothrop. I'm Richard Lothrop, and I will be your host for the next 30 minutes or so while we interview tonight two inter interesting guests. This is the first time we've ever had two guests at one time. Oh. <laughs> but uh, this couple is so uh, interwoven together in the business that they run that we just couldn't separate them. It just didn't <laughs> seem right. We have John Dowds and we have Sandy Dowds. Uh, husband and wife and partners in Dowd's Veterinary Hospital Incorporated. Do you say Inc. or do you say Incorporated? Inc. works. <laughs> <laughs> so we're so glad you could be with us tonight. Uh, a little biographical statement here and then I have two or three questions to flesh it out. That's the you, I believe, got your professional degree at Ohio State? I did not get an undergraduate oh, degree. I went uh, straight into straight the, into the School of Veterinary oh, Medicine. So you got your professional degree then. At yes, the right. State. Very mm -hmm. good. And then you practiced in Anna, Ohio. Which is oh, a little town uh, just on the, the west side of Ohio. Uh, it's just south of Wapakoneta. Mm -hmm. Right. Over well, near the Indiana line. Almost. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then got into Wakeman. So right. right. Or that area. Yes. And uh, <laughs> then. Uh, that you were there, I guess, for what, 12 years, something like that? Mm hmm. Exactly. And uh, then you opened the hospital out here in 1994. Correct. Right. Okay, uh, we got that. We actually worked out of my wife's laundry room for two years <laughs> yeah. in between leaving Wakeman and starting here. Oh, so wow. that, that was a little bit different. <laughs> were you in the shampoo uh, part of it while you were there, since you were right in the laundry room? No, we didn't bathe, Doctor. Didn't, didn't bathe. <laughs> uh, where did you both grow up? I grew up in Hudson, Ohio, Hudson, which Ohio. is uh, real close here, about 50 mm -hmm. miles east. So, I'm right. a Western Reserve Academy. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And were you Hudson also? No, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So wh did you two meet at Ohio State? Yes, uh -huh. we did. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. um, in fact, one of my roommates was um, dating one of his roommates, and uh -huh. that's how we, how we met. And were you also a science major of some kind? Or? Um, I majored in pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So um, I graduated a, a year before John did, and um, we got married after I graduated. Are you a registered pharmacist? Have yes, I am. Great. So mm -hmm. that gives you a, must have a great value to you in knowing what, to, it, it what things are going on right. out there. Yeah, it does. I have, you know, a general science type background, you know, some biology and uh, diseases and mm -hmm. medication. Mm -hmm. She gets asked a lot of pharmacy questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, did you know much about veterinary medicine at all before you met John? No, no. <laughs> I especially the the farm aspect mm -hmm. of it. I was quite surprised at the kind of things that that go on. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't touch my coveralls for two years. Yeah, I yeah. had to wash them myself. <laughs> <laughs> that laundry room didn't fully no. get uh, <laughs> two people in it. And you have, what, two sons? Is that right? Yes, we do. Uh, and either of them interested in veterinary medicine? Not a chance at not this a point. Chance. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. They're into computers. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Well, is there anything else you want to say about your background before we get into the uh, or Not really. Mm -hmm. grew, up, grew up on a farm mm -hmm. and uh, had a strong farm background. Always been interested in dairy cows and horses and mm -hmm. sheep and pigs. And mm -hmm. A little bit of everything. We had dogs and cats. And Did you hang around uh, any veterinary hospitals as a kid? I tried to, but I had a tough time finding a job with any of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's difficult to uh, get exposure, mm -hmm. but it sure helps if you can. Mm -hmm. Do you have yeah. anybody out there now that's maybe someday will go into being a veterinarian? We have several that want to go to be uh, veterinary technicians, mm -hmm. but uh, nobody right now that's going to go into vet school. We, yeah. we give first dibs to uh, students that are really seriously interested in mm -hmm. it, though. So we've had uh, veterinary students work for us, and we've had pre-veterinary students work for mm -hmm. us. And enjoy having them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, and you, did you early on know that you might want to do something about veterinary medicine? How early did this go? <laughs> The eighth grade Cooter preference test. I don't know if it remember the Cooter preference test, yes, but yes. I was uh, trying to manipulate the test just to see if I could make it turn out the way I wanted to. So um, I answered all the questions aiming to be a veterinarian, and it came out 98th percentile in veterinary medicine and uh, second percentile in social work. So I knew that I was not destined to be a social worker, but. Um, 
I didn't see any reason to change. I took the courses that would uh, strengthen my background for getting into veterinary school and uh, never looked back. Haven't regretted it. So. Is it a six year course? Two years it's undergraduate and four? A minimum of two years undergrad, but the majority of people have four year degrees yeah, four before years. they get in. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's a four year mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and lots of it's just parallel to medical school, I assume. Yeah, so up to the point of graduation, we are not required to do in internships and residencies. Mm -hmm. Some do, but most don't. So the average uh, post high school time is about eight years. Mm -hmm. right. Do you prefer an large animal practice over the small, or don't you care? So I have a slight preference for large. Um, I enjoy both. I need a balance to be happy. I like the variety, and that's one of the things that really attracted me to veterinary medicine in the first place is that you get to do lots of different things. It's Every day is completely different. So growing up on a farm, I uh, can relate to dairy farmers and uh, relate to the, the people that grow animals for food. So. Um, I enjoy that aspect, but I think more challenging medically is the small animal work because there's more technology available, there's more knowledge, there's um, the economics involved in large animal versus small. Um, a food animal is an economic unit that you can't spend more on drugs and treatment than the animal is worth, um, whereas dogs and cats have emotional pet value. and. Um, that enables us to do more challenging and exciting procedures mm -hmm. on them. So mm -hmm. the small animal medicine keeps me sharp, mm -hmm. it really does. It forces you to stay on top of the, the cutting edge technology. So you divide your day sort of back and forth, uh, these things? Each, yeah, each we day. do. Um, I start in the morning with uh, surgery, mm -hmm. and dogs and cats, and uh, usually by late morning, I'm ready to go out on, and hit the road and treat the cows and the, the sheep. And we see a lot of goats now. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we like to be back by 4 o'clock for our office hours. Mm -hmm. And my associate um, does more of the small animal work than I do, but he takes uh, large animal work too. So he's usually around during the day seeing appointments. And I, I see appointments on a more limited basis than he does. So. Mm -hmm. and then you have a third vet too, don't you? Yes, she, uh, Dr. Michelle Bayless works uh, part-time for us. She works every Wednesday and Friday. Mm -hmm. Does an excellent job. Now one of you is interested in birds. Dr. Schillig, my okay. a, a full-time associate with me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Brian Schillig is a graduate from Ohio State also and has a special interest in avian medicine. So um, he's are looking forward to... Are you getting many birds coming in there? The we're getting a few. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's building. Right, that's, that's something that takes time. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is probably the greatest professional challenge a veterinarian faces in this day and age? I think it's the, um, the ability to communicate with our clients. Um, everybody sees the world through a different looking glass, so to speak, and it's important to be able to relate to their particular situation. And it can be tough to communicate. Uh, some of the, the serious cases, um, I've had a, well, so ortho several orthopedic cases lately. Things go in streaks, but some of these orthopedic cases are um, difficult to tell people how that this procedure is going to help their animal. Um, but I think, I think we're able to do a pretty good job at it. So I would say uh, communication, it, and that's not covered in vet school. <laughs> <laughs> no. And you're sort of on the job, isn't it, in a way? Right. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I imagine you get quite a bit of the front line because you're in the front more. Uh, yeah, I, I have been. Um, I'm tending to move towards the back and do more um, support and ma manager type work. Mm -hmm. But um, communi communication with the clients is important, and I'm finding it's important to communicate among our staff also. Mm, that's to, right. To uh, understand each other and do the best job we can mm -hmm. for everybody. It takes tact, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> there was a bin after I had this question down. I, I have since read two articles just in the last day uh, which talked about the same thing, that the trouble physicians have communicating with adequately with patients, particularly terminally ill sure. uh, mm -hmm. patients. Mm -hmm. And apparently these things are not addressed in medical schools even not more than they are. Right. <laughs> I think a lot depends, must depend on the personality. And, 
And I imagine you have to be very patient, not only with the animals, but sometimes with the, yes. the uh, <laughs> legged people that came in. Right, come yeah, in I am, as well. I'm working on my patience, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> this leads to one question that has been in my mind, and it's one I've asked physicians sometimes in the past. Do you find it difficult to detach yourself emotionally from the uh, animals? Because you must get I think it feelings of affection for yes, some of them. Yes, I do. And, uh, I have a, a special place in my heart for golden retrievers. I, mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I think they're one of the best breeds, and I have a tough time detaching myself when that's a terminal case. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a, a picture of a golden retriever on the, the wall in our, in our clinic that was a terminal case, so that, mm -hmm. that really hit home. Um, it might be a little bit easier for me than some other veterinarians because I, when, I, when you grow up on a farm, you get toughened a little bit to, mm -hmm. to some of that mm -hmm. and I I think I build myself a little bit of a mental block just because I think that I can do a better job mm -hmm. for the animal if I'm a little bit objective um, so yeah it's tough but I think you have to have to do it so it's with the temperature right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are there any guidelines uh, that you follow when you're dealing with dogs or cats or I suppose larger animals that are terminally ill. How, mm -hmm. how do you break yeah. that to the patient's uh, owners or? That is a big, in? big gray area <laughs> and it's, it can be difficult to deal with. Some cases are obvious. Um, if the animal is suffering quite a bit and there's very little chance of being able to help them long term, um, if you feel that their quality of life is going to be very poor, then maybe we should talk about stopping. Um, if the, the owner isn't certain and the animal is still eating and is still apparently enjoying life, then we try and keep going and, and maybe do some palliative treatment. Um, I think that's, uh, that's a tough call for a lot of people, that, that, that situation. So um, I try and help them a little bit according to my personal belief as to what I would do if I was in their shoes and mm -hmm. that's what a, peop a lot of people are asking me to do and want me to do sure. but it still comes down to an individual decision mm -hmm. of, of the owner mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's tough yeah. yeah having been there myself I know what it is yes it is uh, one of the things and this I guess I'm going to aim at you the pharmacy background first then we'll let him jump in okay. I've noticed that medical and veterinary doctors are often prescribing the same medications mm -hmm. that's not uncommon a lot of the drugs are mm -hmm. exactly the same mm -hmm. and some are similar too um, mm -hmm. they may vary in in dose or uh, the frequency that you see a problem. Um, some of the, the older medications that we used for uh, fleas, for example, are, are used for um, in people, maybe for lice or scabies or something, which is not a real common problem, but, but fleas is a real common problem. We've come out with some newer flea medications, you know, since then, and, and uh, things are different, but um, many things are, are very much the same because the body, there are great similarities between the bodies too. And I realized that when the last cocker I had that it was terminally ill and had medication from you, which was sort of steroid, I believe, holding right. action. Mm -hmm. And a physician here in town and I were talking about this and I got the bottle and said, tell me about this drug. And he said, this is ex exactly the same thing we use when the same disease hits people. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he said in some cases it works, in some cases it doesn't. Yeah. And of course by this time I knew what well, my case it wasn't, in this case it wasn't <laughs> working. But it was interesting, it was exactly the same thing. Sure. And uh, I, was, I was interested in that. So is it a challenge for both of you to keep up on all the changes that, uh, <laughs> that uh, you do an awful lot of reading? I need to schedule more time for reading. It, it is tough for me to, to find time to balance our family, our um, community involvement, our church, and our professional activities. Mm -hmm. the, recently, the professional activities have been very predominant. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best way for me to uh, do continuing education is to just step back and go somewhere. Um, 
there are a lot of seminars and good meetings um, all over the country and, and, and this state uh, that help you to keep up. It's important to keep up, and uh, it takes a big time commitment, and, and it's, it's a challenge. So we have professional journals. We have uh, internet programs now. Um, we have seminars sponsored by drug companies where they'll come in and, and sponsor an objective person that isn't just working for that drug company, and they'll actually come into your clinic. And we've had some good staff meetings um, where they'll edu help educate our staff and us at the same time to do new, new products. And Sandy, do you, this is probably less pertinent now since you're in, in the back more, mm -hmm. <coughs> but I assume you're the one that uh, has to deal uh, with walk-in drug salesmen. Do you get much of that? <laughs> and, uh, and how do you handle that one? Do you? Well, a little bit. We have someone else that um, handles more of the, the drug ordering, but I get a lot of the other, um, other salesmen. And, um, That's right, we have other products too. Of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. and other services. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you know, somebody has something that, that sounds good and will be helpful to us, then, then we listen to them. And um, other <laughs> otherwise, we, you know, get the information and see if we can call them back. She gets phone people, janitorial service people, building maintenance people of all types. So I'm. Yeah. I'm glad that she's there. Yeah. So. You're, shield, you're shielded from <laughs> right. yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Because I know doctors have samples given to them all the time. Do you have, do you have a whole cupboard full of samples? <laughs> More than one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I wrote this question down, but I thought we'd see what you do with it. Do people sometimes, the owners of the animals, give you more problems than the animals themselves? <laughs> And if so, how do you deal with it? Do you want to take it? Can I rate people? <laughs> okay, you know. Sure. Uh, emotional people. Uh, yeah, you do. Um, owning pets is an emotional thing. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they're family members. They care about them, and they want the best care for them. And, um, you know, there can, I don't know, things. We can't always guarantee results. Mm -hmm. and, and it's an art, not a science, in a lot of instances. So, yeah, sometimes people don't understand that. And the vast majority of time, when a, a little period of time goes past, then that they're okay with it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but there are, you know, a lot of people think that they're going to go to vet school because they get along with animals and they don't get along with people. Mm -hmm. That's not a very good reason to go to vet school. <laughs> no. Because, uh, <laughs> Obviously, we deal a lot more with people than we do their animals, almost. So. And very right. few animals will accept billings, I suppose, <laughs> and write checks. Uh, right. right, yeah. It's very involved with I've people. had cockroaches who wanted to get up on the desk when I was doing that, but I don't think they could actually handle the details of it. <laughs> <laughs> but event schools teach anything about personal relations? No, they don't. So much. <laughs> That some of the questionnaires after we graduate have given us an opportunity to tell our professors, yes, we needed more training in business management, interpersonal communication, um, you know, dealing with the overall aspect of clinical practice aside from the science and the medicine, mm -hmm. right? They do an excellent job at science and medicine. Mm -hmm. And Ohio State is ranked right up there in an excellent vet school. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the best in the country. Isn't yes, sir. Mm -hmm. right. and when I've taught several. Two related questions. What decided you to accept the challenge to go out on your own? 1994. Well, I wanted to get out of the laundry room, for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually left Wakeman Veterinary Clinic in 1992. And while we were getting our act together in construction, we practiced out of our house for that period of time. I think the reason that I wanted to do, do it on my own was that I enjoy the challenge of uh, making my own decisions. And I think Sandy knew that I wasn't going to be happy unless I did my own. Yeah. <laughs> that way, if, some, if anything goes wrong, there's only one person to blame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. <I'm right>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you decide on the location? for this we, out here? I had a lot of people that 
I was working for in Wakeman that came from this direction. Uh, Western Lorraine County is undergoing a nice controlled growth. We have a lot of young families with dogs and cats. Um, Route 58 has a, a very good traffic flow or traffic count. Um, and it's been in just a great location. Uh, everybody that asks us, you know, we tell them that's, it's, it's a really good exposure. We have a nice attractive building there and people see it and we, we get a lot of, uh, a lot of business from word of mouth and from the, the nice building mm -hmm. that Sandy made me put up. I was going to put up a, you did an it all a rustic yourself. one. You did it all yourself, <laughs> did you, Sandy? Oh, yes, <laughs> I did, out there with the hammer. One yeah. night right. when he wasn't looking. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had a, you, I didn't know whether you had done a marketing study or whether you did anything of that sort. Uh, well, we did a, a rudimentary market study, mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. we, we looked at where the need was and where uh, an office would be best placed. Mm -hmm. and sure, that that was part of it. Sure, sure. That was part of our business plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, let's take a quick break for about a minute, and uh, then we'll be back. We'll be back in just a few moments. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and you will stay with us, and we will return very quickly. These days, the media seems to move faster than ever. No sooner does something happen than the TV cameras are there covering it. There before almost anyone else. Almost. Please support the American Red Cross. The need is real. The time is now. Help can't wait. staying with us uh, tonight uh, on conversations with both of our guests are John and Sandy Dowds, uh, proprietors of the Dowds Veterinary Hospital Incorporated. Well, we've been talking about different things, and let's talk about staffing. And we touched that just a little bit. Uh, you have the two full-time doctors, and of course you're full-time, and you've got a part-time uh, veterinarian that right. comes in. Mm -hmm. um, do the three professionals divide it? Are you, are you dividing this up somehow? If you're, you're doing more of the large animals, for example. Right. Somebody else does mm -hmm. something else. I didn't want to hire someone just like me. I think uh, the diversity of, of different interests is, is helpful. Um, we all have our strong points, and hopefully we complement each other. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Dr. Schilling uh, enjoys uh, surgery and enjoys the avian work. Um, Dr. Bayless likes um, the interpersonal at relationships of, of the, the exam room interaction. So she does uh, a lot of appointments for us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, that, that answers that, I think. Uh, do you um, have difficulty obtaining and keeping good health in this full employment time? That we're yeah. You want to take that one? <laughs> uh, Sandy does a lot of the hiring. It's yeah. it's a big I was really job. Looking at her, I know it's, yeah. a, it's, yeah, a, yes. it's a challenge. <laughs> oh, she wants to be yeah. diplomatic. I can see that <laughs> she wants to be very diplomatic. Right. Um, yeah, it is. We've got a good crew of um, a core group of people that have um, stayed with us for for a while, and they're mm -hmm. they're really the, the core of it. Um, it's we look for people that have a love of animals and have some experience and have a good attitude and uh, are on the ball and um, it's uh, I don't know if we tend to hire people maybe that are um, in a time of their lives when a lot of other things are happening in their lives and sometimes they leave because they're getting married or having children or or things like that mm -hmm. but there is some tone turnover but we're growing and we are you know, looking to increase our staff. So it's a it's a field where 
there are people who are interested in doing it. We are blessed with a lot of applicants. Mm -hmm. So great. we have not had to beat the bushes and, mm -hmm. and advertise very much. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's been great. Um, I know a lot of other businesses have trouble finding people, but we've not, so. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. And you've mentioned what you look for. Uh, what, uh, do you give priority to people with experience, or do you rather have them early on and you can mold <laughs> them, mold them as you wish, shape them, hone them, whatever the term uh, is? Experience is real good. There is just a whole lot to learn, a, a thousand details about animal care and also the different procedures in our office. If someone has worked at a veterinary hospital elsewhere, that, that helps get them up and running and functional really quick. Um, but aside from that, you know, uh, attitude is, is so important, a mm -hmm. positive attitude and eager to learn and eager to jump in and try new things. That's important, too. Mm -hmm. And of course, a love of animals. I just thought of something I hadn't thought of before. When you get out of veterinary medicine school training, is there an intern period? Can you go and intern with others? There are a lot of internships available, but it's not required. Yeah. yeah. There, there are some excellent referral hospitals that are mm -hmm. um, places that several specialists gather. There are specialists in veterinary medicine in the field of dermatology, ophthalmology, orthopedics, almost every medical specialty that you can think of. Um, and they offer internships to graduates, the top graduates out of uh, the vet schools, yes. Mm -hmm. so. I, I never thought of that before, and it just suddenly no. hit me when we're talking about staffing and experience. A lot of veterinarians like to work with someone else, and an older experienced veterinarian for a couple of years before they go out on their own. So mm -hmm. That's helpful too. Sure, that makes sense too. Right. Well, here you are six years later, and you're completing a large expansion. <laughs> and I mean large expansion out there. Have you about tripled your facility square footage? Would you say? I, w I would say mm -hmm. so, yeah. Right. I was looking at the other day, and I thought, but this is about three times what they have. Yeah. A lot of the additional space is in boarding, which isn't nearly um, as costly to construct as the, the pure medical facility. So, yeah, but the square footage has tripled. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about the, you're touching it here a little bit. Tell us about the new services you're going to do. You're going to do grooming, mm -hmm. training for obedience, mm -hmm. and Boarding, of Board, dogs expanded, and cats. expanded boarding facilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, really nice big um, canine suites. We call them. They're they're dog runs that are um, have an inside outside feel, although they're uh, enclosed in a in a building itself. Um, they'll they'll be um, really spacious and easy to clean and and really nice for the dogs. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to have cable TV in the, in the rooms? <laughs> that may come. That may come. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I've heard of animals that are glued to TV, so right. believe oh. it or not. But there, are, there are some boarding kennels that offer uh, internet access so that people on vacation can check up on their dogs mm -hmm. while they're gone. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Dial them in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Someday, maybe. <laughs> we're, we're also putting in uh, kitty condos for, for cats. Uh, a kitty condo is a... Uh, a series of, of cages or suites so that they have access to different areas. Um, they're large and we're putting them up against windows and we're going to have bird houses and we may have a fish tank for them to watch and we have a, a cat play area too. So um, a lot of people surprisingly, you know, want to board their cat too. So I was surprised at the number of cat boarders that we have. I and mean, we're seeing that the demand is there for uh, better uh, cat boarding facilities and facilities for large dogs. We had a lot of requests that we had to turn down for boarding large dogs, which naturally is the type of animal that people would or need to leave behind when they take trips. So, for Is there any time of year where this peaks? Are there more times when people, do you notice are parking their dogs, if I may use that term, and, and <laughs> sure. going to some place, or is it sure. much the same one now all the way around the year? Well, Thanksgiving and Christmas, the mm, holidays, the holiday spring season. break, and well, and then again in summer when people go on 
vacation sort of. Yeah. It is fairly seasonal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And are you planning a grand opening for this? Is there something in the works <laughs> coming up? <laughs> After we get organized. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. We've started to, to use the new facility Already. now, mm -hmm. but um, we're we thought after the holidays um, in January we would be having an, an open house oh, when course. people could come and and see the whole facility tour the hospital as well um, we're planning some educational type things and posters and people talking about all sorts of care for their pets as well as seeing the the boarding and grooming are and you training. expanding the hospital part and the in the examination rooms and so forth? we've added a fourth exam room mm -hmm. um, we're adding another isolation room mm -hmm. um, we're adding more storage um, a better area in the treatment room so that we can observe the animals as they recover from the anesthesia a better area for the uh, intensive care cases so yes we are expanding that too um, that that renovation process is is going on now because we're 95 percent done with the new building mm -hmm. so, right and you're adding staff gradually are you is right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes have you got everybody in place or not yet <laughs> still, still still looking a little still bit looking right. around mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. well you've got right. some time yes you right. move in do. Do. Now, i just thought of something else that i hadn't thought of before you talked about the intensive care mm -hmm. but of course, would follow as it does with people. Right. Uh, how do you do the covering of very sick patients uh, during the night hours? Do you have some way to monitor or somebody? We are. In we do not. We don't leave animals that are really seriously sick by themselves at night. Um, we're fortunate to have a 24-hour uh, veterinary emergency center that is up in Lorraine that we refer those patients to. So if um, we don't want to leave them overnight unattended, we have them uh, transported up there. Good. So, mm -hmm. right. I hadn't thought about that, but obviously, <laughs> funny as you talk, which is we talk, I think of things I hadn't thought sure. about before. <laughs> John, this is for you. Well, I'll make it a double one. But <laughs> you can have the second half of this. <laughs> Would you recommend veterinary medicine to young people? Oh, absolutely. That's right. Yeah. And uh, we need some sharp, young applicants to veterinary school mm -hmm. that it, it's uh, it's been a wonderful profession as I touched on before the, the variety is there it's challenging um, economically it's it, it's just as good as almost any other field too so yes I would recommend it um, need a strong science and math background love of animals ability to communicate with people um, hit the books <laughs> right it's competitive to get into veterinary school Right. And like, part to you, would you uh, recommend pharmacy to young people? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's a great profession and, and really growing, I think, in the things that uh, pharmacists are becoming um, more drug information experts, not just dispensing. The whole field of uh, natural medicines is really becoming important, and the interactions that those um, drugs have with, with more conventional ones, it's really interesting and uh, growing and uh, I think you're a good example of the fact that not all pharmacists are in drug stores or so they can <laughs> you can do other things uh, yeah. as you're doing uh, related things but uh, certainly it, it must be a tremendous help to him to have you doing that pharmacy part uh, yes. Yes, dear. Yes. <laughs> yes dear yes yes it is yes yeah. it is well, we're almost at the end of this, believe it or not. Uh, any uh, final comments you'd like to make? Nothing other than uh, Oberlin has been a, a great town for us. We, we enjoy the community. Um, the variety here has been wonderful. Um, the people are friendly. We, we're pleased as punch to, mm. to be set up in, in our shop here. So mm -hmm. it's been great. And you're still living in Wakeman. Yes, yeah, and right. Just have a not too long a commute. No, and, uh, so and that kind of is in the center of my large animal practice. So that's part of the reason. That so you can go staying. directly from home sometimes. I right. Suppose, if mm -hmm. you wanted to, yes. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, there was something else I wanted to ask. Oh yes, if there are aspirant, is that the word I want? I guess so. Mm -hmm. Aspiring. Uh, vets or pharmacists out there listening would you be glad to talk to them if they 
wanted to talk to you about. Uh, well, that's, that's, that's one of our favorite things. <laughs> sure, that's yes, great. of course. Great. Well, we certainly thank you for being here, and we have uh, two things we're going to give you. One is a tape of the show, which we're not quite done with it yet, so we can't <laughs> give you the tape, but uh, it's coming. But we do have a mug for each of you, a Conversations with Lothar mug. And Sandy, oh, that's well. yours. And John, that's Thank his you. yours. Thank you, Dick. Thank and, you. And uh, it's been delightful to have you uh, on the show. And uh, thank you so much for coming and spending this time in your very busy <laughs> life uh, <laughs> to be with us. Uh, right. Thank you, too, out there for being with us this evening. And uh, in January, we're not going to do this in December, but in January, we will be back uh, at the end of January with another interesting guest. Until then, uh, this is Richard Lothrop saying thank you and good evening.